People's Democratic Party, PDP, rejects results for Ogoja Yala Federal Constituency and the just concluded by elections in Cross River State. Digital Television Network Operator Star Times engages on routine maintenance of masts to provide quality signals. Plus, Court of Appeal constitutes election petition tribunal in Cross River State. Details shortly. Good evening and thanks for joining us on the news. I am Udwak Etam. The People's Democratic Party, PDP, says it has rejected in totality the results announced by the returning officer in election for the Federal House of Representatives for the Goja Yala Federal Constituency, in which the FPC candidate was wrongfully declared winner as he did not score the majority of valid vote cast in election. The state chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Bernard Shusikem, stated this during a press briefing at the NS State Embassy Press Center, Calabar. Achigo Mbasi has details of that report. The People's Democratic Party, PDP, while briefing newsmen, alleged that the by-election was characterized by massive irregularities, including violence orchestrated by the APC-led government and her officials who snatched ballot boxes and other election materials at gunpoint and manipulated the election results to their advantage. The party therefore demands as a matter of urgency the disbandment of the special police unit under the chief security officer of the governor, which is being used for thuggery and political purposes, raining mayhem on innocent voters, contrary to all expectations of the people. The party further wants INIC to investigate its staff in charge of information technology unit with a view to unraveling its interference with the beavers deployed for the election, which it claimed five were missing before the election. Being that INEC cannot on its own reverse the results, we're only announcing that we will challenge the process through the legit legitimate processes. The party urged INEC to produce all beavers used for the election to ascertain if the accreditation recorded in the machines corresponds with the number of votes declared by the returning officer in the February 26th by election in Kalaba, Achibombasi, NTA News. The Department of State Services, DSS, has denied a media report credited to the national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Dr. Iyocha Ayu, against security agencies in the country, alleging that his party would not use the SSS to harass the people when they take over Aso Rock in 2023. A statement by the public relations officer of the DSS, Dr. Peter Afunaya, says that though the service restrains itself from joining issues, particularly with politicians, it wishes to state its disapproval of such statements, which is considered unjustified, unfair, and speculative. Dr. Afunaya restates the unwavering policy of the DSS NERA to treat with kid gloves its personnel who run foul of the law, assures that the service is a frontline guardian of democracy. While members of the public are urged to disregard Dr. Ayu's statement, politicians are enjoined to desist from making unguarded utterances with tendencies to breach public order and further assures that it is committed to maintaining usual neutrality and transparency in the discharge of its mandates. The President of the Court of Appeal, Justice Monica Dunban Manson, has constituted the Cross River State National and State House of Assembly Tribunal sitting in Calabar, Cross River State. A statement by the Secretary, Cross River National and State House of Assembly Election Tribunal, Abba Umaru Dahiru, says, the tribunal, which will take place at High Court Complex Moor Road, Calabar, is in line with Section 133, Subsection 3A and B of the Electoral Act 2010, as amended. The Federal High Court sitting in Abuja has ordered the Central Bank of Nigeria to release the sum of 81.9 billion, being an amount standing to the credit of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation and its joint venture partner, Mobile Producing Nigeria Unlimited, to oil producing communities in even our local government area of Akwaibum State. Justice Time will time while granting the order mandating the CBN to make the payment, and the judgment said. It was wrong for the Apex Bank to say it has to obtain the consent 
of the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice Abuba Kamalami before charging the judgment debt insisting the Apex Bank is not a public officer. The Ibna communities led by Obong Efiom Achara and nine others through their counsel Lucius Mosu brought the suit against NNPC, Mobile Producing Nigerian Limited, and Exxon Mobile Corporation, seeking about 100 billion compensation for economic losses suffered from oil spillages caused by the defendants during exploration. The oil communities also claimed the defendants caused environmental degradation in their communities. Justice Time had on June 21, 2021, judgment ordered, awarding the payment to the plaintiffs who are now judgment creditors. The court also ordered that the money must be paid within 14 days, after which 8% interest will be agreeable on the principal sum annually. You are still watching NTA Calabar News at 7. You can equally watch this newscast on our YouTube channel at YouTube slash NTA Calabar. The news continues shortly. Stay with us. <laughs> And thanks for being there. And now to the rest of our bulletin. The digital television network operator Star Times has reiterated its commitment to ensuring quality signal coverage and innovation for both content and decoder products. To improve digital TV entertainment services and viewing experience for Nigerians, Star Times is engaging on routine maintenance of its masts to provide quality nationwide signals for its subscribers. Our written them who captured the renovation process reports that the exercise is in collaboration with NTA and Star Times. As one of the largest government television stations in Africa, NTA Network maintains a prime position in many Nigerian homes, especially among lower and middle class in rural areas. Since the establishment of NTA Calabar in 1977, efforts have been made to sustain the station even with the attempts by the NSAS hoodlums destructions of the station in recent times. However, NTA, in partnership with Star Times, in dissemination of information which has led to the maintenance of the NTA Calabar Tower. The tower is over 45 to 46 years old. So when we find out that some of the pipes are already rusted, he had to write to the management uh, in collaboration with uh, Star Times. So we have to come down and fix this. So, so far, so good. They have changed most of the pipes that were bad. And uh, they're also going to have a painting work on the tower because it's also old to avoid some uh, issues because like the experience Star Times had in uh, Midugri, right? Midugri, where the tower collapsed. So to avoid things like that, because of the property and the life of people in the compound, if such should happen here, you know what that means. So to avoid stuff like that, that's the reason why Starter said, okay, they have to come and change it. The regional team said the company is particularly interested in providing quality nationwide signals with a clear digital, terrestrial and satellite television signals to Nigerians' television households. I get up, I do the right thing I need to do up there. So I'm always happy when I'm climbing. I'm used to it. That's my work. The general manager, NTA Calabar, Mr. Sam Olalude, speaks on the development. Sometimes I'm taking the opportunity to service the maps and put it in proper shape. All the guardrails are serviced and greased. The members that are, rust, that are rusted were replaced. And uh, the mast is painted. And I give us confidence again that for a very long time, we know that we have a mast that is secure. So we want to thank Star Times Network for coming to our aid and making sure that. Uh, this must 
is refurbished. It is hopeful that with the replacement of new equipment on the tower, the signal strength and quality will be improved. In Calabar, Arut Ndem, NTA News. To address the problem of housing deficits for government officials, especially upon retirement, Governor Dumi Manuel has flagged off a free residential estate for senior state and federal government officials. Susan Asopo has details. One of the basic needs of man is shelter, but the high cost of residential buildings or its inadequate state makes it a challenge for many, including civil servants. The flag off of these residential estates for senior government officials, initiated by the Akwaibom state government, is in tandem with the federal government's policy of tackling the housing deficit, which is not only peculiar to Nigeria, but a global phenomenon. One of the high points of this initiative is the fact that the state government provides a platform for retired senior civil servants to also own plots of land within the estate. To develop the plot by potential owners, Governor Dom Emmanuel says the state government will fashion out possible ways of assisting beneficiaries. So we'll enter and we'll discuss. If it's going to be in the form of grants, we'll look at it. If it's going to be in the form of support, we'll look at it. If it's going to be in the form of intervention, we'll look at it. We'll look at it one by one. Anyone that is most suitable, I want to assure you that we'll go along that line. The residential estate, which has about 100 plots, was acquired in 1991 by the Akwaibom State Government, but was abandoned, which led to encroachment by members of the community. So when you approved that there should be a land uh, recovery committee, this is one of the land that was recovered. It is 15 hectares of landed property here. The residential estates for senior state and federal government officials at completion will have security outfits, EFCC office, JAM office, and other basic amenities to make life comfortable for retirees. In Uyo, Susan Asukwa, NTA News. The governor of Bauchi State, Bala Muhammad, has described Governor Wike of River State as the new phase of good governance in the country, given the quality project he's doing in River State. The governor of Bauchi State was speaking as the special guest in Portacot when he flapped off the construction of a tank flyover by the River State government. Ogedi Nyekwere completes the report. Since the inception of the present administration in the state, Governor Wike is in a hurry to change his narrative of development. This he is doing through the urban renewal project of his administration and the flag off and construction of roads in the hinterland of the state, among other life imparting projects of the administration. Most striking is the flag off and construction of 10 flyovers in the state, five of which have been inaugurated and the sixth will be inaugurated soonest. Governor of Bauchi State, Bala Muhammad, flagging of the Rumokurishi Elimbu flyover, which is the tenth in the series, extolled the sterling leadership qualities of Governor Wike and his zeal to develop the state infrastructure wise. He has raised the bar of subnational leadership in this country. We are very proud to be associated with him, some of his templates that have really been implemented. Some of them that you can touch them in terms of improving the quality of life of our people. He is a great with the followers who will come and find you for you to be paid compensation. And then we have to also relocate the post. I don't want the contractor to use that as an excuse. Now what? The people don't want to use. No. We are paying you your money as we are paying your money please without diminishing. The Rumokrushi Elimbu flyover is 840 meters long and the bridge will cover 526.5 meters with 313 meters transition zone. Among other features that will make the project good for the motoring public, the River State government had earlier signed a memorandum of understanding with Julius Bega for the construction of the Rumokrushi Elimbu flyover. In Port Harcourt, President Muhammad Buhari has left Abuja for Nairobi on the invitation of his Kenyan counterpart Uhuru Kenyatta.
The president was seen off at the Nnamdi Azikiwe International Airport by his chief of staff, secretary to the government of the Federation, ministers of the FCT and special duties, minister of state for health, inspector general of police, director general, department of state services and other senior government officials. While in Nairobi, President Buhari will participate in activities commemorating the 50th anniversary of the United Nations Environmental Program, UNEP. The theme of the special session is strengthening UNEP for the implementation of the environmental dimension of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. He is expected to deliver Nigeria's national statement at the event and participate in high-level dialogue sessions on the environment. Organizers say for 50 years, UNEP has coordinated a global effort with member states to address the world's biggest environmental challenges. It is an opportunity to reflect on the past and the future by reinvigorating international cooperation and sport collective action to address the triple planetary crisis of climate change. Senate has voted for the bill that seeks to alter the provision of section 162, 318 and 5th schedule of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended to provide for local government financial autonomy and section 7 to establish local government councils as a tier of government with a fixed three-year tenure. Section 121 and part 2, third schedule, seeking to provide financial autonomy of state legislature and state judiciary, we are also passed while section 84 and 124 seeking to provide pension for life for presiding officers of the national and state assemblies was rejected. Wife of the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Dola Po Oshibanjo, Minister of Women Affairs, Pauline Talon, and other top female government officials witnessed the process in solidarity for the Bill on Affirmative Action for Women. Bill number one, 2022, Local Government Financial Autonomy. The summit colleagues, the results are there. Yes, 92 senators. No, two senators. Abstain, zero. Total, 94. And that complies with the registration. Carried is passed. Meanwhile, President Muhammadu Buhari has written to Senate seeking the amendment of Electoral Act 2022 by deleting Section 84, Subsection 12. Meanwhile, voting on Constitution Amendment Bill at the House of Representatives is bringing up a variety of outcomes. Attempt to let to rest issues on value added tax, for instance, by alterating Part 1 of the Second Schedule of the Constitution and enable its conclusion in the exclusive legislative list could not meet the two-thirds of votes required for it to pass. The bill that made provisions for immunity for presiding officers of national and state houses of assembly was also rejected. So far, two bills seeking more inclusion of women in the political sphere suffered setbacks. The bill seeking 101 special seats for women in the national and state assemblies and the Women Affirmative Action Bill also failed to secure two-thirds of votes as required. Voting on the Women Empowerment Bills was conducted in the presence of wife of the Vice President, Dola Kuo Shibanjo, and her entourage. That wraps up our package for this evening, but before we go, a recap of our major stories. People's Democratic Party, PDP, has rejected results for Goja Yala Federal Constituency in the just concluded by elections in Cross River State. Digital television network operator Star Times is engaging on routine maintenance of masks to provide quality signals. It was also in the news that the Court of Appeal has constituted election petition tribunal in Cross River State. That is it on our news tonight. Thanks for watching. Good night.